I'm Kim Mazzell, uh, the first lady of House Music, one of the founders of House from Chicago. And um, I just thought I'd put a nice little reel together just to show some of the things that was in early uh, house, house music and um, the first record that we wrote and recorded for myself uh, will play and... Um Obviously, I'm very young there, so. <laughs> so yeah, that's the Blow Monkeys. That's the early house scene on the north side of Chicago. This is my record label, and this is the record playing, Taste My Love. Some early Kim with Soul to Soul when I was with Soul to Soul. Early DJ International Records. Came to London, the press. Farley, Jack, Master Funk, and the infamous Tracks Records. Chicago House Music. I'm in the Hall of Fame now in America. <laughs> yeah, Ian Wright. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my first outfits. Jazzy B and Soul to Soul. The infamous uh, album cover that I've got there. 45 with Jocelyn Brown and me. It's Marshall Jefferson, the godfather of house music. Yeah, Chicago bad boys. A little cassette tape in case anybody forgot what cassettes look like. Yeah, syncopate record. 45 single. This is pioneering in Europe. It's the house scene in Chicago, 1982. Capitol Records, just uh, quite a lot of press and just some of the early like uh, club days, a little, little, little psychedelic, some of my records and CDs. Jacking your body is what they used to call house. Jack, jack, jack your body. Early days in London, 1988, I think that was. Frankie Knuckles, I came to this country with him first. Dr. Robert from the Blow Monkeys. So a review from when I played Wembley. Smoke on the water. <laughs> Young Hearts Run Free. Just some early backstage stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Jocelyn Brown, another great singer. This is early records. Ultra Nate and um, uh, the ladies from Chic. Rocky Jones, the originator of uh, Chicago House Music label. And straight out of uni, that was me, just like you guys. So yeah, I just thought I'd give you an introduction. I'm from Gary, Indiana originally. I grew up uh, not far from a record company called Steel Town Records, which was the record label of the Jackson 5. So I kind of really grew up on the block of music and really just um, had music all around and wanted to do something in the industry. I want to let you know why it's really important for you to be in the industry because the industry will always need new people with new ideas from some and to extrapolate it from some of the foundation of music and carry it on. So once you find whatever your lane is in the industry, it's really important for you to succeed. We all want you to succeed at wherever point you start and whatever avenue you think you may end up in. You may create music, you may work in uh, events, you may work in PR and press, you may work in fashion or dance or management or DJing. And you may start in one place and end up somewhere 
uh, somewhere else because it's just so many streams of income, independent or signing to um, uh, something major as well. So just wanted to just say that. But we've got uh, someone else coming in, I'm not sure. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that I'm just really here to like impart that on you. I went to an all, um, to a music university, somewhat like Point Blank. So I am a big person about um, getting an education in music. This is a specialty school. You're not gonna find it everywhere at every university. Uh, I'm not gonna give my age away, but when I was at Columbia in <clears throat> the 80s sometime early, um, it was one of the only music schools in America that you could learn um, entertainment management, you could learn how to write a contract and read a contract, you could learn um, if you wanted to be in news and read the news and sit in front of a camera, you could learn how to promote concerts, you could learn uh, law, all of these things. And we had people like where I'm at now who had lived their lives in the industry come and do master classes back in 1980. Hello, somebody. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not telling you. So it's really a privilege for me to be here um, today, you know, at Point Blank Music School and sharing some of my journey with you guys. And it's also good to be back and seeing people in person after two and a half years of um, lockdowns and not knowing what was going to happen. As you all know, there are a lot of odds. Right now, you've got the big internet and everybody thinks that the internet is really made it easy for everybody when it, in fact, it's made it a bit more difficult because you can get lost in um, streams of millions and millions of views and millions of people and how do you get your money and how do you, where do you start? How do you stay um, inspired? The components of achieving anything that you want to go into music or, or even if you wanted to go into advertising or just a regular job or just your life, you need a vision. You need a vision. And most of you probably have vision because you've got yourself to hear, you know. So you need to have a vision. Expectations. You know, what, what are your expectations, small or large? You could take little steps. You know, sometimes people take leaps and bounds. I leaped and fell into the fire and had to try to get back out because I went too far at first, but you know, I tried. So, you know, motivation, what's your motivation? What motivates you, all right? Another thing that I think is very important is self-discipline. You have to have discipline because the industry that you want to be in or surrounded by, there is so much uh, temptation and different distractions just with the internet or just a genre of music. You think you want to do this and all these other things come at you. So I would say reality, reality, hype. Hype is important. You know, that's how we sell product. That's how we sell ourselves, you know, sometimes to uh, uh, for a job or for any position. So we're just going to talk about vision. Vision is the instance of great perception when you know and you feel inside of yourself that this is something that you're going to do and you're going to follow your intuition. Me, I knew very I, I knew very young that I wanted to sing and do music. And I didn't know that that's what that was. You know, it just had these urges like adverts would come on and I just would memorize them and sing them or TV shows and this. And I wanted to just sing. Now, if it was possible, I didn't know anything about any of that. I was too young. But on my block, there was a group of guys kept hearing all this music. You know, I kept hearing all this music. And then one day, I saw them in my television on a Saturday afternoon. And those boys were the Jackson Five. Whoa. They were down the street from my house. Whoa. So I actually, I hadn't put it together, you know, in any reality, but I knew something in me that is possible. You know, I saw something close enough to me, and I'm talking the 60s in America, and I saw something close enough to me that my perception of I can do this became really, really, really real and very apparent. But I didn't even know what this was. It's just a fantasy. I'm just a kid. I'm 
putting on, you know, a towel and singing with a hairbrush. You know what I mean? So it's just that. So, but, but hold on to those things because that's encouragement and that'll keep you going from time to time and back again. So I would say, remember that. The expectations, it's a strong belief that something will be realized and it will happen. It will happen. What are your prospects? Where are you putting yourself at? I heard Prince say one time that um, you have to be in the right place at the right time. Part of it is being in the right place at the right time. For me, the only way that I could figure that out is to be everywhere that you found out something was happening. Because something may just jump off, you know. You're in London. London's a big metropolitan town, you know. Things are opening back up. You can, um, you can connect to a lot of different events, a lot of, like these type of events here. You may meet someone at this class. I understand from you it's just day two back, you know, in, in school, so you don't know who's doing what, but you've got your expectations, you, you're prospecting, you're trying to meet people. I don't, I will ask later what you guys want to do because I can't just look at you and figure out, oh, he's the writer or there's a manager over there or there's uh, someone else over there, but I can't figure that out. But I would just say, you know, this is day one. So just, you know, believe, believe, believe. Your motivation, that is a condition of being eager to act or to get something done, your motivation. I mean, I was like super motivated to get here today because number one, I wanted to see all of you guys and I wanted to encourage you, you know, but I was also wondering, you know, and I'll probably ask it, what, what motivates some of you? You know, what, what, what motivated you to, to take this course, the courses that you're taking? to come to Point Blank, to come to a music school, you know, what, what, what is it that you're feeling? And to continue with that, because sometimes, I don't know if you're in a two-year course or a three-year course, but you know, it's not easy. I don't know what some of your personal circumstances are. When I was in school, I was a single mom when I was at university. So I had a lot and I had to continue to encourage myself, inspire myself. <clears throat> to do music, to even when I looked crazy, because I didn't look like, you know, Kim Azell on that record cover or there, totally different. But in me, in me, you know, I felt um, inspired and I felt that, the, you know, if I continue to motivate myself and your energy will bring the right people to you or the wrong people yeah. to you. So, you know, you just um, what you need what you need there will come. You guys are quiet and listening to me. I love it. I love it. So we were talking about self-discipline because discipline in this industry is very, very critical. I mean, we're not robots. We're, we're not, uh, we're human. So once you start, it could just even be a lunch hour here at school thinking about something and somebody's like, uh, guess what? Right down the street, this is happening. What do you do? Do you go to the classroom or you do you go down the street to find out what's jumping off there? I mean, it's 50 50. Something you could meet something there or you can learn something in a classroom. You got to, you know, kind of weigh it out. So, you know, I just say the self discipline that helps train your mind and body so you can focus on your goal and then make a very good decision about what that goal is and which one of those parties, classroom, uh, session, because I mean, we're in the, we're right now, you could have so many different options, which way do you go to, you know? So try to st stay focused on what it is that you want to achieve. Know what it is that you want to do and what will help you the most, even if it's boring. You know, even if it's boring, because I kind of really stayed on track a lot and I, I was really boring. I know I'm like flying, whatever, but people was like this girl, I my glasses. I stayed like on the one, like a drum beat. I was on the one day in, day out, day in, day out. And it was so much happening at my school, at my university. So many people were coming in and out that it was just really the place to be once I got into the rhythm and finding out who people were there and being, and being, willing 
to kind of like work with someone else or, you know, find out where spirit is that's kindred to your spirit. Cause everybody's spirit ain't kindred with your spirit. Okay. So you just have to like, you know, fill out for that too. Cause this, I mean, music is very, very spiritual. You know, the realm that you guys are going into making music or art or visuals and things like this is a very, very, very spiritual place. So keep your, you know, your spirit as cool as you can too. And I, I just really want to put that out there. So that's really something. Stay focused on your goals and what, what it is that you want to achieve. I would definitely say that. Reality. Aha. Well, the reality is the state of what the things really are. What's really happening? Okay, you've got this big idea. You want to become, you want to write, or you want to sing, or you want to be in fashion, or you want to DJ, and you want to travel. You're focused. You're this, you're that. The reality, you got one pound in your pocket. <laughs> you live in with five or six people. You can't get to class, you know? Do you let that like get you down or do you find another way to get to the school? Because my circumstances was I was a single mom. I wanted to do music. My mom was like, you need to go and study something else where you could get a solid job and a career you know, or go, you know, work somewhere that's secure, you know, because the reality is people think that this is not work. When this is really more work than a lot of things people do that just punch in a clock, because what you're doing is you're creating your life's work, your purpose, and your purpose is really more powerful than certain work. Now, you may have to do I don't know, some restaurant work or this or that on the side so that you can get through the courses here or some of the some of your goals and that you want to reach. But your work, your real life's work is what your purpose is in life. So know your purpose and stay focused on that. But also know that reality <laughs> is here. You know, we've all got all these different types of things that challenge us because as soon as you make a commitment to say, I want to do this, I'm going to be this because your your spirit tells you already who you are. You know, when that thing doesn't let you sleep and it just keeps coming, at, that's who you are. That's what your work is. That's what you got to fight for. So once you realize it or make a statement about it or mention it out loud, it's like all this other energy hears you and comes at you to just, you know, trip you up, stop you from reaching that goal. And that is the reality, you know, of all kind of things. Who do you think you are? Um, oh, you, oh, you think you're going to be a DJ or, oh, you a singer. Oh, you're going to be a songwriter. Oh, you going to manage artists. Who you going to manage? You know, they remember when you fell off your bike when you were five years old and cried all day long, you know, whatever. So you get all of these different types of things coming at you in reality, you know. But the thing that will make you stronger and what will encourage you is to stay focused. So one of the other things that, that I would say is the hype. The hype. Hmm. Is that the hype? What's the hype? To stimulate and to contrive and a little bit of deception. Yeah. So I know you guys probably heard that song. Don't, don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. Because, um, yeah, it is, it is designed to stimulate you. And, and it is a lot of hype around our industry, but it's coming from pure art and they use it to sell things to other people and to distract you from, again, your focus. So there's a lot of hype around other artists or other things, especially right now with Instagram and this and that. You may see somebody and it looks like they're ahead of you. Every day, it's like, why are they using these people look like they're head and they're not. They're not. It's, it's pretty much an even kill. It's pretty much an even kill. And if they can use that platform to hype whatever the product is that they're trying to sell 
or get people to create, I always say that it's fair game that everyone can use that same platform. Cause I mean, that it's a great place to use for some of your work, but you got to be careful again, that people don't come and take your intellectual property of whatever idea it is that you've taken, that you've put together. It's still, it's just a really a slippery slope on that right there, I would say. The achievement of success. So what, what you dream and what success is to you may not be what somebody else's success is. I see these photographs of all these big old houses and balling and all these different cars and all of these fake poodles and pools and all, you know, the same old video hype, hype that they keep selling everybody saying that that is living the dream and that is success. I, I want to go into urban farming. And for me, just a lot of land and some space, a tractor where I can grow some fruits and veg and maybe start a school and wear me some, some wellies and teach people how to grow. That's living the dream to me. You know, uh, riding a horse and having a horse farm or something like that. And even smaller things, just having a blog that's successful, that you can get enough people that you can encourage that come back and forth all the time, come and listen to you where you can build an audience, where you can go to a venue and sell some tickets and they come to listen to you talk about what that is. That's success to me. There's different levels and I think a lot of People, they're they're throwing this big, big, big hype. I mean, uh, the the what's that group? The Migos. I mean, these guys are walking around with bricks and bricks of uh, real money, paper money, real money on the outside, paper money on the inside, or whatever. <laughs> you know, it is, and just throwing it around. If that's not what it is that you're looking for, that's another distraction, and don't believe the hype. And just because you have a different ideal of what you want to succeed at that doesn't make you less or smaller than anybody. As a matter of fact, it makes you smarter. It, it really, really does because you can be very, very successful, earn a good living, you know, um, hidden in plain sight if they, if you want to put it that way or under the radar, on the radar. So I, I like to encourage like a lot of people that want to get into the industry to look at different um diff different parts of the industry as i was saying like there's there's management there is there is um people who work in styling there are people who have um resale shops that do different music in my town there are um lots of these different things and there's lots of um i was talking to a couple of girls who want to drive trucks I know we're not here talking about truck driving trucks, but there's no women in the trucking industry and you can go to school to learn to drive this trucks. I was like, you girls want to be truck drivers? They're 15. They live in my village. And I'm like, well, that's interesting because, you know, they're not two years ago. They wanted to be married to a footballer. So I'm like, oh, they're, you know, actually coming out of the uh, haze of the media because the media put a lot of people in a haze. You can manage your life just as well, making 50, 60 grand a year, uh, steady on in this industry, year after year after year. You can, even now with all of this um, industry online and all of these different streams of income, you can do that very, very well and manage your life without over um, shooting the bank, as they say. Backup plans and alternatives. I just kind of put that up there because really, I don't believe in plan B. I believe in plan A. Because if you have a plan B, you will not work on your plan A as hard as you could because you got to fall back. You got something to fall back on. So you're not really, really stressing it. And you're not really, really putting your all into it till it collapse and the wheels fall off and the wheels crumble and all of that happens. So then what happens? What do you do if your plan A, you work it, you work it, you're not distracted, you're keeping your goals, you're watching everything. You're two years in, three years in on your plan A. And it's just like, it looks like, it's not gonna work this one. What I say, 
get another plan A. Just another plan A. Never B. And work it, work it, work it, work it, work it. Always a plan A. Till the wheels fall off. I mean, my wheels have fallen off. I don't know how many times working the plan A of music because my thing was have my own label, which I did. I put my first record on my own label as my project for my senior um, class and I created that and I was going to hold on to that and get a distribution deal and blah 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 and that record came out as like a buzz got over to the UK and next thing I know they're flying me to the UK to sing this song I'm it's just my senior project in university I sing it the major labels are there and they signed me to a major uh, label deal first house music artist crossover i worldwide deal i i took it that but that was not my plan a my plan a was to have my own label run my own label but i got you know blindsided really i got blindsided and it worked well for a while but really in hindsight i should have never given up my label to sign to a label, even though it was a major label deal with all of the bells and whistles and I got beautiful records and beautiful this and that, I should have worked out a way to do a deal with them and keep my label, like distribution or something like that. But I was really awed and being the first one out of my genre, uh, house music to, to get that done uh, was an honor you know, and still is. And when I got the deal, everybody from Chicago House Music, I gave, put them on. You remix this, you do this. So it was very good, but I still go like, if I would have kept my label, you know. But, you know, what, what can you say? It was still a, another plan A. I wanted to be in the industry. I got in it and a lot of things happened from that. So one of the things that a lot of people and myself included don't think about because you really can't believe that you're going to get a five album deal for half a million dollars and live in blah, 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 and be the first one and da, 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 and sell out Wembley eight nights in a row and blah, 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 and work with Joaquin Cortez, work with uh, Naomi Campbell, work with Mick Jagger. You know, you're not ready for that. You can't be. So are you sure you want to be in the spotlight? is like one of the questions I always ask people. Like, yeah, you know. It's like, are you sure you want that level? What, what level of achievement? And if it happens, um, you know, how do you handle it? It's a lot on you um, and the light is on you and anything you say is twisted and now you've got cancel culture. I just say, are you sure? Get ready, get ready, get ready because it's like riding a wild horse. And uh, once you get on that horse and they spank that ass, bam, 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 you off. So that's how that goes. One of the things I want to say is that relationships are key in the music industry. They really are. And as you see, my PowerPoints there are always value the people you meet and work with because you never know where they'll be five years from now, like everybody in this room, you never know where any of you guys will be five years from now. He may be like DJ in somewhere, any beats and somebody over here singing. He's like, why don't you come and sing on my show? Why don't you design, you know, the cover for me? You never know where anybody will be and or where yourself will be. So you have to be really cool with people as well, but also protect your energy and protect your space. Relationships are key. It doesn't matter if it's an O2 wireless, a masterclass at Point Blank, or walking down the street and you see Khalees, or I'm so old, I don't know whoever is singing now. <laughs> Cardi B. <laughs> uh, or Tim's. I love this girl, Tim's. She's a really great uh, singer from Africa. And you never know. So I always just try to say relationships are key relationships are key. Make sure you're a person of value because people can feel your spirit and they'll say, come, come. I've, I've not had not one person not like sort of pick me out. Like I keep picking you out. 
say, come, let me talk to you. Come, you know, they can feel your spirit. It doesn't just mean individuals. It means countries and cities too. Ibiza, London, the U.S. Towns, venues, and other places is territorial, just like gangs and any other thing like that. So relationships are key. If a promoter sends you to Spain or he beats it to do a gig and you're there for one week and he's paying, you're like, I'm here for a week. Five more clubs ask me to perform. Hey, I'm already here. I might as well just go and take this money from these other five clubs. You do not ever do that unless you get permission from who brought you there because they paid for you to get there. The other ones that's trying to pick up and get a free gig because they didn't pay for the hotel. Plus, they're ruining a relationship that you may have with a promoter who could be bringing you back and forth for the next 10 years. Also, these guys are like Don's and they're very territorial as well. It's like the other club should have come to me and said, I would like for Kim to play at my club too. I'm going to pay you some of the money, blah, 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 to have permission for her to play here. Otherwise, you will not be invited back to that town. Relationships are key and it's just not individual. It could be London, the east side of London, and you working somewhere and doing something and you think it's open, but it's not. You haven't been cleared. America, forget about it. You cannot just go to Houston and do some shows for whatever, whatever. Vegas, Mr. DJ, you got to have the right people bring you to Vegas. So relationships are key. So I would just say get, get those relationship skills. Sometimes it's good to early on, um, you know, if you if you notice someone in your group or, or in your lessons or something that you see got, you know, the type of energy you like to work with, you know, begin to talk. I know sometimes people are shy, but just, you know, try to find out what the vibe is and maybe you could help each other. You know, sometimes it's good to get with people early on then later, because they're like, oh, now you wait. Uh, oh, you wait for this. You should have came earlier. So, you know, get in as soon as you can. Get the skills. I would definitely say that. And I would definitely say that uh, Point Blank Music School is, is, a, is a great place to be at because they, they bring you proper people to talk to, do master classes, and I want you to be encouraged because we need uh, new people in the industry for it to continue and carry on. So I'm going to leave it right there for right now. Thank you. Thank you.